Hi, my name is Jim Carosa. In this video note, what we're going to do is take Wireshark out for a test drive. Now I'm assuming that you've already done the Wireshark lab at the end of chapter one, where you've downloaded Wireshark, you've done the installation, and you've actually started it up. And so what we're going to do in this uh, particular video note is we're going to start up Wireshark, we're going to download uh, a very simple file from a website, and then we're going to use Wireshark to look at the HTTP GET and the reply that come back from the server. Okay, before we get started using the Wireshark packet sniffer, let's first talk about how packet sniffers work in general. And let's start using this scenario. We've got a workstation over here on the left hand side connected by an Ethernet cable to a first hop router over here. Now this might look exactly like what uh, you have your desktop configured. This could actually be a wireless link rather than a wired link, but for this example we'll be using a wired Ethernet link. Now, as we saw in Chapter 1, inside your operating system we've got a protocol stack here, a physical layer, link layer, network layer, and transport layer, and you're running an application on top of that protocol stack. Now, when your application is going to send packets to a remote location, the application level message gets put inside a transport layer segment, which is put inside a network layer datagram, which is put inside an Ethernet layer frame, and then sent out over this first hop router. Now, this notion of encapsulation that we learned about in section 1.5 and in figure 1.24 in the text in particular are going to be very important for understanding how Wireshark works, so you may want to go back and take a look at that. Once you've installed Wireshark, Here's what the situation looks like. You've installed a piece of software called PCAP inside your operating system and then an application level program called a packet analyzer which is the Wireshark interface that we'll be looking at in just a second. Now the way Wireshark works is that when packets are sent and received up and down the protocol stack a copy of each and every Ethernet frame that is received and sent will be captured by PCAP and passed up to the packet analyzer. So with that as background, I think we're ready to fire up Wireshark and capture some packets. Okay, so I've started up Wireshark and this is the first screen that I actually see here. Remember, we haven't actually started capturing packets yet. Now there are lots of uh, pull down menus across the top here. The only ones we're gonna be interested in are file, which will allow us to either quit Wireshark or to save copies of the packets that we've captured. More interesting will be the capture pull-down menu where there are an interfaces submenu, an options submenu, and a start submenu. And really the only one we're going to need to take a look at is the interfaces one here. So let's bring that up. Now what this uh, pop-up screen here shows me is that my laptop has three interfaces connected to it. Three links coming into it. One is EN0, that's my wireless link. One is EN4, that's my wired Ethernet link to my first hop router. And a loopback interface called LO0. And don't worry about LO0, that's actually an internal software interface that we don't need to worry about. Now over on the right hand side we see three start buttons. And what I want to do here is I want to start capturing packets that are coming in on my wired Ethernet interface. So I'll go to this middle start button here and click start. And we'll see a new menu come up or a new window come up which actually shows us any of the packets that have been captured. Now nothing's been captured yet. Oh, there's a few. These are service discovery protocol packets that are passing by my interface. But what I want to do for this example is I want to go visit a website and actually issue an HTTP GET and then look at the response. So let me bring up my web browser here. Okay, and the URL that I want to go to is shown right here. And uh, this is actually a URL that's given at the beginning of lab, uh, lab 1 at the end of chapter 2. So let me hit return here and bring up this file. And this is a very simple file. It says simply, congratulations, we've downloaded the file. Now remember, we've been capturing packets all along. So let's go back to Wireshark go back to the capture menu go back to interfaces and press stop okay 
Now what we've done is we've actually stopped packet capture and notice on my Ethernet interface EN4 I've actually captured 23 packets. Now let's take a look at what those packets actually are. So let me close this window here. Okay, before we actually take a look at any packets, let's take a slightly closer look at this particular screen that we have here. This screen will become second nature to you as you start to use Wireshark more and more. We see the menus across the top that we saw before, these pull-down menus. There's a filter. I'll come back to that in a second. This is now the packet capture window. What this is showing is the list of all captured packets, the packet number, the time at which the packet was captured, measured in seconds from the beginning of the trace. This is the source IP address of the packet, the destination address of the packet, the protocol type of the packet, how long the packet was, and some identifying information about it. And we'll come back to this screen in a second. Now, this screen here, this part of the screen, lists all of the packets that have been captured. And this part of the screen here gives me more information about a particular packet that's actually been captured, and this gives me even more detail down here about a packet that's captured. So what I want to do is I want to look at the HTTP packets that we've captured. So I'm going back to the filter and typing in HTTP and apply. And now what I see is I've seen now just a list, a filtered list of packets here, and here are the HTTP messages that I sent before. And here is the HTTP GET message and the HTTP reply that were sent from and received back by my browser here. And let's take a look at this particular message here. This is the HTTP GET message. Now notice as I pick one or another or one or another of these particular messages out, this screen down here, this part of the screen actually changes. What this screen is showing me again are details about the message that I selected here. Now notice this is the HTTP GET where I actually issued the GET to the Wireshark lab file that I wanted to retrieve. Let's look at some of the detail down here. Now we see information about the Ethernet frame which contained an IPv4 datagram which contained a TCP segment which contained an HTTP message. Notice these little triangles here. This will allow us to get more information about any one of these particular frames, datagrams, segments, or application level message. And let's take a look at the application level message for the HTTP protocol since that's what we're studying here in Chapter 2. So I click on that and now I've got more information about the HTTP message that was sent out. Here's the get, here's the name of the file that I was looking for uh, in retrieving says HTTP slash 1.1. We know now from chapter 2 that that means that my browser is running the HTTP 1.1 protocol. Here's the host field here. This is the name of the host where I'm retrieving the content from. My user agent, Mozilla, that's the browser that I'm using. Here are the languages that are accepted, the encodings that are accepted. Uh, here's something interesting. Connection keep alive. That means that I'm using persistent HTTP connection. So by expanding these I can get a lot more information about the particular protocol that I'm looking at. In this case we were looking at HTTP. If I was interested in looking more at the IP datagram that contained that HTTP message, I can click on that. I'm running IP version 4. Lots and lots of information here that actually for us right now, since we're only in chapter 2, we'll get to that in chapter 4 and there'll be actually future Wireshark labs looking at the internet protocol. So right now we're looking at the HTTP protocol. We've looked at the get. Let's look at the reply. In order to look at the reply message, I'm back up here in my packet listing area. I'm clicking now on the HTTP 1.1 200 OK message that came back. How do I know that that came back? Notice here the source is 128.119.245.12. That's actually gaia.cs.umass.edu. And here's the destination, 192.168.1.132. And that's actually the IP address of my laptop. So I've clicked on this. 
which now shows me the HTTP message information about that particular message. It says HTTP 1.1. Again, I'm running HTTP 1.1. 200, that's the status code that says everything's okay. Here's the date that I issued it, August 27th, 2012. The server that I retrieved it from, the date that this was last modified, and lots of other information coming back um, in that HTTP reply. Notice at the bottom here, this is actually the data that, uh, that I retrieved, and you probably can't see it down here, but here's actually the ASCII code and the translated ASCII code saying, congratulations, you have downloaded the file and the file name. So this is actually the content, the body of the HTTP reply that actually came back. Well, there's many more interesting things to learn about Wireshark and about HTTP. We'll cover a lot of that, a lot of that in the future labs and actually even in the labs for Chapter 2. Hopefully this introduction, this very short introduction to Wireshark is enough to get you going. Hope you enjoyed it.